Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you how we can render a transparent background and how we can do this using the region rendering instead of rendering a full frame. So when you might consider disabling the background and having a transparency. For example, if your uh, graphics card or system in general is too weak, too slow to handle all of the 3D geometry, you can then put a picture as a background in post-production. So in order to do that, you need a transparency here within the glass areas. To enable that, we simply go to film, transparency, and we have to enable transparent glass. The settings we've just enabled make all of the materials within our scene that include transparency and glass shaders within them, well, transparent. So that means it will be possible to add anything behind them later in post-production. So what you might want to do right now is re-rendering the entire frame, but to save some time, I'm gonna press Ctrl B and mark up this area. So actually we don't have to re-render anything that's beyond it. It's simply this kind of area we want to have re-rendered and transparency enabled. Actually, I will press Ctrl B once more and slightly decrease the area and you might wonder why am I not limiting this border region just to this glass area exclusively. Well, the reason for that is since we've disabled the background, the reflections within our scene will also change. So you always want to leave this extra boundary so you can mask the details later and make the transition between the newly rendered region and the original image a little bit more smooth. So here's our rendering result. As you can see, we only have the selected region rendered. When I click my middle mouse button and pan the picture around, you can see this checker here in the back stays untouched, but you can also see upon zooming in that we have all those very slight shapes here and these are the reflections we had in our glass shader. So that's pretty cool. What you can also see is that we lack the environment reflections in all those surfaces, as I mentioned. The result also got a little bit brighter than the original rendering result, but these are the things you should expect when disabling some of the 3D elements and preparing for the transparent background. So let's now see how we can combine this result with the original picture in Photoshop. And before we jump into Photoshop, please remember if you save the results, you always have to enable the RGBA transparency here and the PNG or TIFF file format or basically anything else except of JPEGs because JPEGs aren't allowing us to save the transparency. With our original rendering opened, I'm just gonna drag and drop the region file to it. So as you can see, when I move it around, we have this transparency visible. So let's align the corners together. Hit OK here. I'm going to right click and rasterize layer first. So as you can see, we have this border and that's because some things within our 3D environment changed and the rendered region is a little bit brighter. But first, we have to remove the actual background. So to do that, you can simply select this layer, enable the eraser tool and just, yeah, paint it out from the image. Next step, we'll be masking out the tone differences we can see. So to do that, let's add a layer mask. Let's switch to the black paint here. Let's make sure the mask is selected and let's use a very soft brush, something like this maybe. You can increase its size a little bit. And yeah, all you have to do right now is simply very softly trying to paint out the tone differences between those two layers. So it's not gonna give you a perfect effect. As you can see here, we have this very clean uh, difference of, of tones, but by increasing the brush a little bit and doing those very soft touches, we can actually try to make it more 
uh, smooth the transition here. The biggest problem will be the fridge probably. So here we would have to decrease the size of the brush and try to paint it out just by clicking multiple times. So yeah, this is one of the things you have to pay attention to when rendering regions and trying to make the transparent backgrounds. You have to consider that the, there will be illumination changes between the original rendering and the region. When I click here, you can see we have our erased effect visible. So you don't have to be worried as we are using mask like this. Just switch the color to white and then you can paint back this area that you're not happy with. So as you can see, I'm just clicking here and making uh, this layer natural again. But I'm switching to black color again and trying to make this transition more smooth. So you can see it's a back and forth process. Sometimes you just have to find a compromise between uh, both of the effects. So here within the fridge, I think I'm gonna simply paint it out like that. And if we zoom out, well, this area could look a little bit better, but I think we can leave it just like that. Uh, honestly, as long as you weren't painting this region in to this original rendering, you wouldn't necessarily notice there's anything off right now. So the final step right now is simply adding the background image and it's going to be Choco for HDR. 05, a backplate from the HDR image. As you can see, I'm first dropping it to Photoshop, not directly to our image. And the reason for that is if we have a big resolution change between images, Photoshop tends to crop or resize the pictures you're using. And I wanna keep my original size of this picture. So now I'm just dragging and dropping it from this file to our rendering. Let's close it and let's move this layer to the bottom. So now you can see we have it visible only here at the transparent area, but the effect isn't that good and natural. So we still have to adjust it a little bit. What we can clearly see is the tone difference between the background and the rendering. So let's add an exposure adjustment layer just above the background and let's simply use this slider to increase the exposure of the background image. You might also play around with the offset settings to make it a little bit more, um, not blurry, but you know, foggy. And yeah, now with this layer here on top, we can move the background again and try to match the look we would be happy with. So let's say, Maybe something like this, maybe something like that. Um, again, one of the reasons I'm not the biggest fan of using the background images like that is you don't see it in any of the reflections. So the result is not that natural. To have this image in the reflections, you would probably have to add it as an image in, photo, in Blender, sorry then render everything with transparency and only then add it uh, here again in Photoshop. But I don't think there is any point in doing that because uh, you could as keep, keep this image as a background in Blender um, as well. So, so you don't have to bother with playing around like this. But there are certain scenarios with, for example, where you have way less reflections as we do in our scene where adding images in Photoshop to the background is, well, it's something normal and everyone does it. So let's say if you're rendering an exterior image, um, then adding the background as JPEGs as, or as images simply um, is probably one of the best solutions instead of creating everything as a 3D model. So yeah, uh, sorry for the long talk at the end of this video, but I hope you find this technique useful and you will use it in your day-to-day -day projects. Thank you for watching.
Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofruit store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.